You're listening to the DolphinsTalk.com podcast network. What's going on, ladies and gentlemen? It's another episode of That's Another Miami Dolphins First Down Podcast with Stephen Daniels and first down guest Josh Moser. And we are live on That's Another Miami Dolphins First Down Podcast. Stephen Daniels, myself, Josh Moser, that guy, that guy right over there, right over there, that handsome fella uh, who's on a day off, a rare day off. What's up, Josh? Man, it feels good. It's a beautiful thing to not be in a suit and tie. Get to put a hat on. You know, just just lounging. This is great. You're not, this is you're what the Justin Timberlake, your suit and tie. Right? I like it, dude. I look. I'm oh, yeah. I'm about it. I love. Uh, that's why in my office I have a couch here to just relax. I get it. I understand it. Um, I love the Dolphins gear back there. I'm seeing it. It's recognized. <laughs> the effort hey, is see, noted. You see this right here? I got this on my trip to Mexico. Um, this is like a little claro. mini surf surfboard with the dolphins logo on it it's pretty dope looking i'll take a picture of it on ig and tag you in it but it's dope as hell i love it hey i love mexico i love the surf i like the dolphins i mean that's a trip everything you could get right there i get it i understand it um all right man look there's a lot to dive into if you're watching us live on youtube hit the like button okay it doesn't cost anything it's free if you're not already subscribed to the channel subscribe there's a lot of great content about the miami dolphins including this one each and every tuesday night at 7 30 p.m eastern standard time josh let's dive right into it uh, a lot of things went on this week or, or this past week it's still going on at the owners meetings um, and, you know, our very own uh, Mike McDaniel had an opportunity uh, to talk about a couple of things, including Bill Belichick not being uh, in the AFC East anymore. So let's just take a quick listen to what he said and we'll dive right into it. Well, um, yeah, it's bizarre. It's bizarre for me. Um, I think I was in high school the last time. He wasn't a coach in the AFC East. So uh, from a competitive standpoint, uh, you, you want to go against the best. Um, I have no doubt that, um, you know, the New England Patriots are retooling in, in their own fashion um, to be their best selves. But in terms of an individual to go against, um, there's not anybody more difficult um, from a defensive standpoint, to try to to try to forecast what they're going to do in that next game, and um, there's not anybody better at facilitating technique and fundamentals across the board. Um, so, to say that uh, I'm, you know, somber and have been mourning the loss of Bill Belichick in the AFC East would be a flat-out lie, and I wouldn't lie to you. <laughs> what are your thoughts about McDaniel discussing Bill Belichick for the first time in over 20 plus years not being in the AFC East? I mean, I love the sarcasm at the end. I mean, you, you're talking about arguably the greatest coach. I know that there's a debate. Look, he had Tom Brady. That's why he won all the championships. Remember, he was a defensive minded coach. I think uh, if you talk to Wes Welker, Danny Amendola, you know, those guys, Randy Moss, they, they may have a different opinion on him. Uh, but what's kind of funny, Stephen, is granted Tom Brady wasn't there. It was Mac Jones, but Mike McDaniel never lost to mm -hmm. Bill Belichick. So I think to, you know, exude that amount of respect for him, arguably the greatest coach of all time. I know Don Chula's got more wins. I know that Belichick was close to the win record and he wants to come back. But to me, my favorite Belichick moment was the NFL draft when he just put his dog on the Zoom call. To me, <laughs> that is like peak, peak Belichick. Forget all the press conferences, you know, um, the people that play for him, you know, just say he's Bill. You know, it's just kind of like the same, you know, he's Saban. But uh, Johnny Smith, the new Dolphins tight end, played for him for a couple years. You know, he had some funny stories. And I think everybody's got a Bill Belichick story. And uh, my, you know, my, I, I think my favorite one is him and Greg Popovich of the NBA uh, always have these one word answers in their presser. And the longest answer i can ever remember uh belichick talking in any press conference anywhere super bowl uh regular season game, it didn't matter was it was to discuss he did 10 straight minutes off one question 
about kickoffs and kicking, man. He remember remember in special teams and how they ran the defensive player to block our kick in our game. That's what it was about. And and that he's seen video and he studied film for years about it. And of all the things for him to talk about in all of his years and all of his press conferences, the longest answer was about kicking. Like that's crazy to me. <laughs> you and know, Bill he's kind of yeah, and I think that's kind of a, a similarity between him and McDaniel, even though they're coming from two different eras where, you know, you're actually studying the game film and, you know, so this is how we're going to maneuver this. It's like strategy and war. And that's kind of how Belichick approached it. Uh, cool to see that his you know son had an opportunity to stay with the Patriots. He decides to go be a defensive coordinator at the college level at Washington. Excited for him. You know, but I don't think Belichick's done in the NFL. And, you know, I wouldn't be surprised to see him, you know, on the sidelines again from everyone that I talked to. He wanted that similar kind of general manager role as well as being the head coach like he had in New England. And it wasn't quite a fit, but I think he would be a phenomenal broadcaster. I think, you know, we could learn so much. That would be interesting. (laughs) He was on an HBO special like doing I think it was like the 75 or 100 best players. It was on HBO a couple of years back. And he was great. I mean, he has so much knowledge and the personalities there. And I'm curious now that he's, you know, out of the game and he doesn't have anything to quote unquote give away or, you know, feel like he would hurt his team. Now I feel like he could open up a little bit, just like we see all these former retired players, you know, they open up and they tell all of these stories. And I would love Bill to come out of his uh, proverbial shell to the fan base and let everybody in on, on the football genius that he is. He and can't be any worse than he can't be any worse than Tony Kornheiser or Dennis Miller or that guy named Tony Romo, who we just all love listening to when he broadcasts games and his love for Josh. Oh, Jim. Oh, Jim. Jim. Oh, Jim. <laughs> hey, speaking of kickoffs, a lot of things uh, took place at the owners meetings. One of them being rule changes, Josh. Uh, kickoffs are going to look a little bit different this year. Do you want to talk about that a little bit? Yeah, I think the coolest thing is that they took this from the XFL. Mm-hmm. And, you know, you, you've been talking about a minor league football team that was defunct. You know, you've tried so many different things to, you know, figure out how to do a quote-unquote minor league system like baseball. And, and here we are. Here's something great that has come out of the XFL with this football kickoff. Um, I don't know. I don't know how I feel about it. I think the, ba- the, uh, the purists, you know, want the idea of a kickoff. To me, I feel like just kick it into the end zone and just, you know, start at the 25. You know, that would take away from electrifying players on the kickoff returns, the punt returns. Everybody loves, you know, those moments, especially in the college game, because you see it happen a lot more. But in this day and age, it's all about player safety. Uh, So it it makes a lot of sense. Um, And, you know, I'm curious to see how it all unfolds. yeah, I mean, I, I think it's new. I think it's going to take a little while. I know we talk about Danny Crossman a lot. You know, here's another wrinkle for mm-hmm. Danny Crossman. And, you know, special teams is very, very difficult in the NFL because a lot of these guys have never played special teams in their life. And then you have some career guys like Justin Bethel who make a career at just Ron doing Neal. special teams. Ron Neal. So it's it, it's interesting. It's a wrinkle to the game that will be different. And what's cool is, is that everybody's – pretty much starting at the same level. So I think in this first year, you're going to find teams that are going to be better at it than others. And there's no doubt that a kickoff will determine one game, at least this season. Well, look, I I think there's two things that stuck out for me for this rule change. Number one, no onside kicks anymore. Like that's, that's gone. You're not going to see that. Right. So I'm interested to know how the NFL kind of dances around that because Look, that's an exciting play, and I don't want to see it fully gone. At the moment, it is, but I'd like to know that if if a team said, you know what, we want to try an onside kick, that they'll go to traditional format just to do an onside kick. Like you can't you can't uh, um, be spontaneous about it anymore. You'll know it's coming, but I would still like to see it. The second thing that for me stuck out was the Saran Neal. You spent all this money on a guy to come in for special teams. And now special teams is totally different. Like you have literally changed the landscape of what special teams is in the NFL, a big portion of it anyway. Um, Not everything, but a big portion of it. And you spent a lot of money on this guy 
and now you're kind of like, do, do you think that the Saran signing was, uh, do the teams have buyer remorse for signing a guy on special teams? Not necessarily our guys, but just in general in the NFL. I think so, but I, I really didn't think any of the coaches or the personnel knew that this was coming. And okay. if they did, they would have, you know, done accordingly. But remember, it's only March. I mean, the draft hasn't happened yet. You still have free agency. OTAs hasn't happened. So call it April 1st. So, you know, we're still five months away from when the season starts. And you can always make rule changes. But you didn't know. And there's still time to to cut a player. You know, it's, it's tough because now you're going to have less guys, quote unquote, they're going to make the NFL for those, you know, special team specialists, if you will. Um, the onside kick, though, I think is, is really interesting because to me, there has to be a, a way for a team that is down in the final minutes to try and get the ball back, to give them some last glimmer of hope. Um, I don't know what the answer is, but to me as a fan and as someone that has watched the game and studied the game, I love that aspect because mm -hmm. when it happens, it's incredible. That's happened rarely. Yeah, but there's you're, so you're saying there's a chance. So you're saying there's that a chance. team also knows. Yeah, I think that team that's down also knows like, hey, we can go score. All right, we can get an onside kick. We're still in this versus we're down 10 points with three minutes to play. Like we have no chance. So I'm curious to see how that plays out as well. I mean, we'll we'll find out. We're going to have to talk to the players about that, but you know, I think it'll make betting lines a lot easier. Uh, I think the betters will be. Um, Vegas will be very happy you know, about it. Yes, I agree. Yeah. And I, I think, you know, I'm curious to see how much that comes into play. I mean, you know, we're in a new era where betting has become more important than I would say a lot of other things around the game. You know, I mean, it, I, I rarely seldomly do a sports report or I'm out in public where people aren't asking me what the betting line is. Yep. And you know, that's the world that we live in. I mean, the Major NBA League Baseball is dealing with their star player right now under investigation for potentially, you know, gambling and that whole thing. So you're right. It, it's taken over um, the industry by storm. But, bro, do you not know who Pete Rose is? I know you're younger, but uh, come you've on. got to have the people I, I, around I do. You. I do. And, and what, look, are you, what are you doing? Look, for me, look, we can get into that conversation all day, Josh. Like, I, and I'll say it real quick. I think the man should be in the Hall of Fame as a player, not as a manager. 100%. Just my opinion. Um, and especially now with gambling being legalized or, you know, accepted in today's culture, <clears throat> excuse me, I think he should be put back in to him and Shoeless Joe Jackson, personally. I know about Shoeless Joe, too. Shoeless Joe had the best batting average of the World Series in 19, was it 1918, 1919? Um, and still, you know, was banned for life you know so what are you going to say to that um all right enough about so that you, this is a dolphin you call show. up kevin you call up kevin cosner you tell him to make a field of dreams too and you figure it out <laughs> you figure it out if you build it they will come all right let's let's dive into more of the owners meetings you talked about player safety a minute ago the nfl making a big rule change and it was very boisterous on twitter uh, with a lot of players talking about the hip drop tackle. Tell me a little bit about that and the reaction that you've seen from fans and players and coaches. This one's tough. It's just, if you, I, I see this one from both sides. For the offensive player's perspective, it is very high injury rate, and they're trying to keep these receivers, a la fantasy football, a la, that's who everybody wants to watch. Keep them healthy. Um, like anything, it's who scores more points. They want to see the, the track meets. It's, it's more fun for the fans. But the notion of football is defense. And, you know, there was all of this with the safeties, with, you know, hitting over the middle and head hunting. And I get it. You're trying to make the game safer. But at some point, are you going to have enough defensive players growing up and wanting to get into football or are they just going to be all offensive players? And, you know, we're starting to see that in the college level where you're realizing that, oh, man, the wide receivers make more than the cornerback. Oh, wide receiver makes more than X. And you're getting a lot of guys move to the offensive side of the ball for that reason, to go after the money.
but you need good defensive players. And uh, it's, it's tough. I mean, it's just, it's just really, really tough. I think it was, was it DK Metcalf that ran down James Conner? Like he busted off a long run. Yep. And then, I mean, that, that's, it's going to be a first down and a 15 yard penalty. Like you're just trying to get the guy down. Like you're not trying to do anything malicious. He wasn't, he was not trying to to be malicious in his tackle. He was just literally trying to keep him from scoring, you know? Right. And I mean, and I think in a lot of those situations, you're just like, dude, I just got to get the guy down. Like, what do you want me to do? I mean, it's, you look at some of these with the, the, the rough and the passer penalties too. It's just like, I barely touched the guy. I took a dive, you know, it's, so it's, I feel bad for pass rushers because they don't you don't know what a true penalty is. I mean, they no. say it, and, and it's gotten a little bit more clear in the last couple of years. But there are still times where you and I, a Monday morning quarterback, are like, "There's no way in hell that was a pat, you know, uh, roughing the passer penalty. No way." Right, but it, and then it's like, I mean, it'll help the Dolphins because their offense is predicated to going over the middle. But you get these little crossing routes from, you know, whomever. I mean, all of those are kind of hip drop tackles when you're in that space. Like they're going to call up into a ball, protect themselves. And then Tyreek's going to go down. Oh, sorry. You know, you're bringing his hip down first. I mean, I, I don't know. It's, I think it's, it's going to take some time. I get it. Player safety. But at some point, like, I mean, you go back mid nineties, two thousands, you never wanted to go over the middle of the field because you were going to get killed lit up. Ray Lewis was going to kill you. You would, yeah, there would be chalk outline on the field. So. There's know. a great video of Chad Ochocinco <clears throat> being oh, mic'd up. I know exactly up. what you're talking about. And he goes into the middle and gets killed by Ray Lewis. And Ray's like, what are you doing coming in the middle? Like, you know better. And he's like, I tried to block Ray. I, I tried to do it. And he was definitely, he was, he was definitely a little uh, stumbly there. Yeah. But I mean, you know, that's, that's Chad, but again, you're not going to see that. Yeah. You're not, I mean, so what, I mean, but as an offensive mind, okay, how do we take advantage of this? You know, here's another advantage for the offense. So it's interesting, you know, as I construct, you know, rosters and all of this and it, it just changes and it's, it's adapt or die. I mean, that's kind of what it is. Adapt it's or whatever. Die. Money so, ball line. So, I love it. So, so here's a big adaptation where, you are going to see, you know, less less defense. You're going to see less special teams, and uh, yeah, it should should make for an interesting year. I, I think the most important thing uh, coming out though is the trade deadline moved back a week. Yeah, that and yeah, that just was released uh, um, Tuesday morning. That was yeah. So this this is interesting to me because you have now a designation from IR, which is the first eight weeks. So now you get to really figure out if that player can come back. And then you have another week now for the trade deadline. So that's significantly going to help the Dolphins, specifically with Jalen Phillips and Bradley Chubb coming off of their injuries and just to see where they're at. And it's it makes sense. The weeks, you know, you have 18 weeks. Do, Nine do you, is the, the midpoint. So do you think it'll see we'll see an increase at the trade deadline of trades in the NFL? Because you and I both are big NBA fans, um, and and obviously we you know we watch and cover baseball, but you know the NFL doesn't have a trade deadline like those two leagues. Are we going to see that now with the trade deadline being pushed no, no, back? They do. No, 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 they do. It's a, it's a harsh deadline. It just moves back a week. No, so I'm just talking about the activity from- the activity you see on trade deadline. Like, you don't see the NFL with a big trade deadline day worth of moves compared to the NFL or the no. NBA or Major League Baseball in the yeah. NBA. Yeah, I mean, it's a little bit different. So depending on when your bye week is in the NFL, now we're moving it back to week nine. Again, there's 18 weeks. You play 17 games. So you're at the true midpoint. I mean, if if your team – just that extra week gives you extra ammo and it helps you learn more information. And I think it's going to be beneficial for everybody. Uh, because if you start, you know, one seven, you know, mm-hmm. you've got a pretty good idea. One six, you can still make a comeback depending on how your schedule lines up. So I think that extra game is, is really, really helpful, but more importantly, you get the players back coming off of IR after week eight. So you really know where they're at. And uh, yeah, I mean, look, the NBA, like look for, look at the heat, for example. I mean, their season doesn't start until after the trade deadline. It yeah. doesn't matter, you know, you know, from, 
November to February, like who cares? And baseball, it could be the same. I mean, we saw the Marlins sneak into the playoffs last year down here in Miami. Granted, they got bounced in the first round by the Phillies. But, I mean, you make a big-time move at the deadline. It could be the difference. It could be the difference between three or four extra wins and, and you making the playoffs. And in football terms, you know, I, I'm telling you, like, let let the Dolphins I, – I like what you said about the Bradley Chubb and Jalen Phillips thing, that God forbid they're not back, which I expect them to be, by the way. But God forbid they're not. The Dolphins can go make a move if they needed to, if they said we need to address the pass rush a little bit better because we don't have it. Right. Right. And week nine, if I remember correctly, dating back to last year, I want to say that that is the, that was the Kansas city game. So that's puts you around the first week of November. Mm -hmm. Um, So, you know, that gives you a a better gauge because you've got to be playing your best football in December. And so I I, I like that move. I, I mean, I would almost prefer that it would be back another week just to, make it more fun um but you would because the longer you push it back the more teams know if they're in or out which gives them opportunity to buy or sell players correct and especially with players on expiring contracts that are set to be a free agent you know kind of like how bradley chubb came over to the dolphins um you know so yeah it'll, it'll make things more interesting for that final month of the season but It makes sense. Look, there's 18 weeks. It's nine. It's the midway point. I think that's fair. I I really like that decision right there. Um, Josh, two other things about the NFL's owner meetings, and I don't know if you have the answers to this. Uh, Number one, has there been any talk that you're aware of uh, about a potential second bye week because the NFL has expanded? Do you know anything about that? It's been proposed. Um, Basically, what that would do is it would – well, it, with that, it would be 18 games. It would be an 18 game season games instead season. of a 17. Game. Yeah. So how that would work is you would take a week from the preseason. So there would be two preseason games instead of three. And then for a total of 20 games. And then there would be two bye weeks for each team is the proposed measure. And so would the season I start was, in mid August now? Or would you I push back the, season, the Super Bowl? I, no, no. The Super Bowl is going to stay in February, so I believe it would be Labor Day weekend is when the season would start. Um, so the so, so the it would start first, the the very first week of September. So you get September first, second, and third games instead of September seventh, eighth, and ninth, or ten. Or correct. Eight. Or or with the or you could push it back a week, and then the Super Bowl instead of being. You know, the February fifth or February sixth is now February twelfth. I think 4th. last yeah, last year was on no, February twelfth. Tenth like this year, it was on twelfth yeah, because it was, it was right my son's birthday, Valentine's Day. Yeah. yeah, and then it'd be so. I mean, they could do it either way, but you know, your big windows in television are November and February. Those are called sweeps months, and that's when the TV um, companies they get all of their ratings. And when you do deals with and you know CBS. NBC, all of that. Now so it would make networks. sense that the Super Bowl is going to be played the third week of February compared to the season starting maybe at the end of August or the beginning of September. Yeah, it would put you another game in a ratings period, yeah. um, which makes sense. And I think just too many people are traveling during August Labor still. Day weekend. and yeah. it, So then it would almost, you know, the, the, pro- the problem with that is you, you need the ramp up and you need to go through training camp. You need all of that. And well, so there was a long time ago, there was eight weeks of training camp and then six or eight weeks of preseason, then six weeks of preseason. What can you really learn about a roster with only two weeks of games in the preseason? And does this also give teams the opportunity to have more inner squad uh, camp or training camps during the training camp period. Yeah. I mean, I think they've been doing the joint practices now for like three or four years. And at that point in time, you learn more from the practice than you do from the game. You do. Um, the reality though, is, is that you need to practice special teams. And I think that is the biggest part of the preseason because you're having guys that have never done that before in their lives and you need to get tape and film on that. So that, that is the biggest benefit of the preseason games. And it also gives an opportunity for an undrafted player uh, to flash 
Uh, I remember Hard Knocks last year. I can't remember his name, but he was the receiver for the Jets. They had two undrafted receivers, and then they ended up making the team. One of them had a, a kicker, a punt return in the regular season for a win. It was a crazy play. Um, I, can't, I can't think of his name at the moment, but there's always that kind of unsung diamond in the rough guy. Seven and are, are seven eleven, Peter? Chris Hogan for the Dolphins years ago when we were on Hard Knocks in, in training camp. Yeah. I mean, are you going to know that Cater Kahoo can play? Like, did he really show enough in practice versus the games? Like, some guys are just gamers. You want to look at a couple of these guys. And, um, but for the most part, look, no one, no one cares about games that don't count. It just, it I is what it. it is. I understand it. And, it's and fans business. hate that they have to pay for it. So I get it. But I understand it from every perspective. I just want to know what you're truly learning from two weeks of preseason games compared to three or four, you know? I don't think you need four. I, I mean, I think two's a, two's a good number. And okay. you've got two opportunities, and that should be fine. It, but the problem is, is that's a lot of wear and tear on those guys. And then with two preseason games, you're going to rest all your starters. So you're really going to play a game with, I don't want to say replacement players, but, you know, bottom of the roster players guys that are going to be playing in the ufl later on in the year you know look i mean realistically for the 53 man roster you're talking about one or two spots per team so you're talking in total 60 players their roster is already set like they just have it's do we bring an extra linebacker here do we bring an extra person here is this person more versatile or is there an injury so now we got to bring this person on that's that's all that That's there it. is. Very no, seldomly agree. is there a team going into the preseason where you've got to get like ten guys out of your out of your fifty three. It, it's just not how it works. That's another Miami Dolphins first down podcast. Myself, Stephen Daniels, first down guest each and every Tuesday. Josh Moser uh, here on Dolphins Talk. A um, couple of other things to dive into. By the way, if you're watching us on YouTube, hit the like button. If you want to donate. Uh, and watch, there's a YouTube super thanks button. It's a heart sign with a dollar sign in the middle. You guys can do that. Help the channel grow. Help us create more content and be able to do more things uh, right here on Dolphins Talk. Um, all right. One of the things in the press conference uh, for Mike McDaniel yesterday that he addressed, Josh, was Odell Beckham Jr. And he kind of uh, alluded that the Dolphins had put out an offer to Odell Beckham. Uh, what can you tell us about that, and what do you think about that? Look, Odell wants to get paid. You know, he's arguably a gold jacket player. Um, he's had injuries. You know, we all know that he's a Super Bowl champ. Even though he got hurt in the game, he would have been arguably the Super Bowl MVP had he stayed healthy in that game with the Rams. I agree. Uh, he, he loves Miami. He's here. He hasn't left yet. Um, he was Miami partying fits. on Instagram, I saw, at the club. So, you know. Yeah. But look, Jalen Waddle is very like soft spoken, but Jalen Waddle is very funny and he has his personality. He just kind of keeps it away from the camera. Mm -hmm. But you want to talk about star power from an outside perspective, Tyreek and all his craziness, Odell Beckham Jr. potentially and everything that he brings. You've Kim got Braxton Kardashian. Barrios is dating the most popular woman, arguably. It, well, no. Well, yeah, I think Kim might be out of the picture now. Okay, um, oh, I'm but sorry. Alex Earl with Braxton. <laughs> and, yeah, I mean, this is – I mean, you want to talk about just like a receiver, you know, show. I mean, what they're doing with Devontae Adams. I, think, I forget the four guys that are doing the receiver show that's like the, from Omaha Productions. Like, that would be a reality TV show in itself on just the receiver room. And – um yeah, I mean, I think Odell fits. I think he works with Mike McDaniel. I think, you know, the city of Miami fits. It's just how much money are you willing to give up? You know, you talk about Braxton took $3 million to come here. He had other offers. Johnny Smith had higher offers. Jordan Poirier took a $2 million deal. He had higher offers. So a lot of these guys, they want to be in Miami. Odell loves Miami. He's made his money. There's no state tax here. So it's just. Does he want to play want to in Miami or not? is going to be the question because I know for a fact that if he has any other offers, they're not going to be higher. They're going to be higher than what the dolphins are offering. So he's either going to come play here because he wants to play here or he's going to go take the money somewhere else because we're not giving him the best deal. 
Right. And there's there's three things that that play into that. So you obviously have the finances Two, it's it's the legitimate chance to win a, a, a trophy. You want everybody wants to win. And I think the third thing that very few people talk about is the playing surface. And it's natural grass here. And that yep. is highly preferred by the players. Shaq Barrett that just signed took less money to be here. Tore his Achilles, same injury as Jalen Phillips. He said he would not play on turf. So you go back to the NFLPA ratings that came out. Remember, the Dolphins were number one overall. You know, there is so much that Miami offers that other places don't. I spent five years in Green Bay. I know Odell loved Green Bay, wanted to play with Aaron Rodgers back in the day. He's still linked to Green Bay with Jordan Love and how they're coming up. But do you want to live in Green Bay for a year or you want to live in Miami? I'm going to say Miami, Josh. That sounds like the better time to me. <laughs> yeah. And I mean, for, for people, you know, during the week, you know, not that these guys don't work, but for the most part, they're at the facility at six in the morning and then they're done by three o'clock. So yeah. you've got all afternoon, you've got the evening. And so, you know, I think it's like a school schedule for kids and, you know, granted you're getting up early and obviously you're a professional athlete. There's a lot that goes to it, but, and to have an afternoon off to go walk on the beach, you know, to not have to deal with snow to, have two great airports right here. I mean, there's a lot of access for family and other things for players later in their career, like Odell, who's made his money. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, it's the opposite for Andrew Van Ginkle. You know, he, he could have stayed here on a, on a lesser deal, but he took the money, went closer to being home in Minnesota. So that makes sense for him. So, you know, Odell's flashy. He fits right in with Miami. I hope that he comes. The locker room is going to be ridiculous if that happens. And uh, Odell Beckham, right. Tyree Kill, and Jalen Waddle on the same football team would be absolutely insane. And as far as the girlfriends or the wives of these players, I mean, look, even Duke Riley is dating Kiki Palmer, apparently. So, I mean, look, it's you know, the real housewives of Miami need to be uh, the, the real wives of Miami Dolphins, uh, players of Miami. Sounds like a good show to me. I'm just saying, sounds like a good show, yeah. Yeah, you know, I think it might we might have to do a special Mother's Day episode and, and bring <laughs> some of them on. When I was in Green Bay, uh, we we did a wife show. So we had all of uh, the wives come in and they talked with our morning anchor and it was a blast. This woman, Heaven Daniels, was married to Mike Daniels, was a longtime defensive tackle there. She yep. was kind of the, the ringleader behind it. And uh, I love Mike and Heather. They're phenomenal people. He's got a great and, last uh, name. That That's all I know. Fun. He's got a great last name, Daniels. Yeah. I already like him anyway. Um, all right, a couple more Stephen things. D. Makes sense. A <laughs> couple more things to dive into before we get out of here. If Odell doesn't sign, what is the number three wide receiver going to look like for Miami? Do you think that's something they will address in the draft? And by the way, one of the things that McDaniel stated yesterday is he alluded to talking about making the team better. And as far as the draft was concerned. Uh, for any specific player, he would take more best player available rather than to specific need for a position. So what is your thoughts about the number three wide receiver real quick? Well, you have Braxton, you know, granted, he's your return man. And remember, you have Eric Azucama and you hope that he can be healthy coming off of neck surgery. He's a great athlete. He's long. He's rangy. He's kind of like an MVS type build. And you hope that he can do something. I, I believe he was a pretty high draft pick. I want to say he was like a third or a fourth rounder. Mm -hmm. And so he's somebody that you still have in the building. You lose Cedric Wilson. He could be Cedric Wilson's replacement. I think that's, you know, very realistic. But when you look at this draft, this is a very, very deep receiver class. And I expect them to take a wide, wide receiver at some point. Remember, they will also receive compensatory picks for Christian Wilkins leaving. They will receive picks for Andrew Van Ginkle leaving. So they have some extra firepower to even potentially package some of those extra picks and move up if they really like a player. But, Steven, just please do not let them take a wide receiver in the first round. Please. Bro, bro Josh. Please. You already know how I feel about it. I will. You're going to see. <laughs> we are doing live um, uh, streaming for the, for the draft, night one and night two, as long as we keep our picks and everything. Um, we're going to be doing live streams during the draft. And let me tell you something, Josh. If the Dolphins draft a wide receiver, there's going to be a clip that will be, be replayed because I will lose my mind if we draft a wide receiver at 21. Just I'm just throwing that out there. I'm, I'm going to lose my yes. mind. Yes. There's enough 
there's enough talent where you can get somebody in the later rounds and you still have some good, you know, free agent guys. Shoot. I, I mentioned MVS. I know he dropped a lot of passes, but he, he came up big in the playoffs and he's got Super Bowl. Won the game winning Super Bowl. Uh, he, you know, did he have the game winning Super Bowl catch? So, I mean, look, that's something to be said. He did. Yeah. But I mean, look, you're looking for, for what's different on this team. And I think they've addressed it with their tight ends. And remember, they grabbed the tight end from Kansas City that Tyreek Hill loved. And you know, Jody, was a Jody was right? last year. So now you can see. Name. Yeah, I mean, I know you love Baby Boy and Tyrese, and you wanted to say Jody, so that's fine. <laughs> uh, phenomenal movie. By the way, this morning yeah. we've had a Moneyball reference, a Field of Dream reference, and 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 now a Baby, Baby Boy. Boy reference. Oh, my goodness. Movie quotes at its finest. Here live on can, that's another Miami Dolphins first down podcast. <laughs> oh, we could do an entire podcast speaking only in movie quotes. We should do that one day. That is, you know what? I'm telling the story. I'm telling the story. I'm telling the story. So my buddy Al in college, uh, happily married now with a family. We'll leave his last name out of this. But we were at a bar, and he, I, he would literally only speak to women in movie quotes. And granted, you know we're like twenty twenty one. You know, using the fake ID to get in and. It was just hilarious. And some of the girls like knew some of them and they were just like, they just didn't care. And then some actually like recognized every single one and thought it was the funniest thing in the world. I mean, you know, <laughs> immature 21 year old kids, you're laughing about it. But I mean, these football players aren't that much older than that. And no. it, it's, it's just, ah, oh. you know what? We're doing a podcast. Life is good. Sun hey, is let, let, let me tell you, you something, know, so Josh. Thanks everybody this, for tuning in. This year, when you're doing some uh, interviews, I'm going to tell you in a week, all right, this week you have to work in a question with this movie quote inside the question. We're going to work that in and see how that works out for you. Oh, yeah. I mean, in all my sports casts, you know, I used to text buddies or I've got a group chat with former teammates and, you know, they throw me a, a word of the week and I've got to work it in somehow. Um, we're yeah, going to we're gonna, we're gonna play with that, Josh. We're going to have some fun with that. you just Rob giving Schneider. me ideas. My, my brain is racing now. All right, last – Last thing we got to discuss yeah, you, before we get out of here, because there, there's too many good ideas going through our minds right now. Too many good yeah, ideas. we got to go. Um, all right. Tua, off-season workout program. McDaniel discussed it. Last season, we saw Christian Wilkins do a hold in instead of a hold out. What do you think about Tua? Is he going to attend OTAs this year? What do you think? Yeah, I mean, look, Mike McDaniel said that he would at the owners' meetings. Um, I know Tua is, you know, still here in in South Florida, still working out with Nick Hicks at Perform. And look, I think the respect that Tua has for Mike McDaniel it will keep him okay. there. You know, we understand that that money has to be made, and that you know you need to do the right things for yourself to protect yourself. I mean, look, we're talking about a potentially it could be a deal for four years and $200 million, $50 million a year. I mean, realistically, that's the money that the team is, is talking. And, um, you know, I understand the Lamar Jackson played on a tag and, you know, both sides, Chris Greer and to his representation, athletes first have said that they've been working on a long-term deal. I would expect, you know, this to continue well into to July, well into, um, you know, possibly even, you know, the preseason, but remember, this team just restructured Bradley Chubb's contract. After June 1st, they will get Xavier Howard's dead money, which is another $25 million off the books. So you are looking now at clearing the cap space for the move for Tua. And uh, Mike McDaniel said something else in his press conference at the owners' meetings. It was something to the extent of, look, you know, we're kids. You know, if we were kids, we would love to spend the money. But sometimes we got to be the parents and yep. we got to be able to pay the water bill to keep everything on. And so this to me, by letting Christian Wilkins go, letting Robert Hunt go, they just got priced out. And they know that that money is, is going to Tua to lock him up long term. So I think that he knows that. And look, Tua and Mike McDaniel are a duo. You know, that's, that, that's, that's it. That's their secret sauce. I think they are perfect for each other. Um, I think Mike McDaniel brings out the best in Tua. And, you know, I, I would expect him to be here and I expect him to get paid you know, before the start of the season, uh, you don't really want him playing on, on the one-year deal, you know, as, but I mean, the fan base says, look, you know, he hasn't won any big games yet. Let's see how he rides it out, you know, this year. But, you know, that's, that's the big million dollar question 
but the reality is, is I don't know who you're going to get that's better at this point, you know, who, who you're going to bring in. And um, I think, too, eventually he's going to get paid and he's the franchise guy. I would agree with you. All right. Uh, that's another Miami Dolphins first down podcast in the books. Uh, if you want to follow my man, Josh Moser, tell the people where they can find you, Josh, and what do you got coming up? Yeah, right there on the screen. Uh, so we got at the Mose Nose, Twitter, Instagram, all the social media channels. We've got some really cool stuff coming up, actually. We got uh, baseball fans, Marlins opening days Thursday. Mm -hmm. And then, of course, we've got Heat playoffs. We've got Panthers playoffs. Uh, crazy game just underway right now. Um, but Steph Curry and the Warriors are here. We've got Boston is up in Sunrise taking on the Panthers. So two top teams in the East. So South Florida continues to be the mecca of sports. Messi still here. And uh, we've got the Olympics coming up this summer with a few South Florida athletes. So we got some cool stuff coming down the pipeline. And, you know, most importantly, I'm about glad to be here every Tuesday night at 730. All right. You can follow me at Stephen D. SKPL. Spread kindness, positivity, and love. Got a lot of great things working on over here at Dolphins Talk, and we're super excited about the future here. Uh, if you guys want to DM uh, at the Mo's Nose or myself, Stephen D, uh, we'll be happy to answer any question live on air. Um, we definitely want to be able to interact with our viewers. If you like today's show, in the comments section below, um, I, I want you to ask us a question, and we'll answer it in the chat. If you want to ask us anything about what we talked about today, put it in the comments section below and make sure you guys share the link and let people know about this awesome podcast called That's Another Miami Dolphins First Down. Until the next time, Josh Moser, myself, Stephen Daniels, we'll see you on Dolphins Talk. The whole city rising. A little early, it's a bit surprising. Business moves, now we enterprising. Switch it up, now we improvising. Go to get in the winter column. Whole squad.